Good evening, everyone. Thanks a lot for staying with us. You're watching Plain Speak with me, Shivani Gupta. Hijab hearing in the Supreme Court took a dramatic turn today as Solicitor General Tushar Mehta submitted that the hijab protests in Karnataka were not spontaneous. While representing the Karnataka government, SG Tushar Mehta reiterated that the agitation over hijab was part of a larger conspiracy and orchestrated to create social unrest. Remember, a full bench of the Karnataka High Court had held that wearing hijab by women was not an essential religious practice of Islam. The bench further held the prescription of uniform dress code in educational institutions was not violative of the fundamental rights of the petitioners. While defending that judgment, the Karnataka government told the Supreme Court that students were goaded into wearing hijab inside the classrooms by Popular Front of India and its affiliate, the Campus Front of India. Given the global context in which this legal fight is ongoing, not surprisingly, the SG also mentioned Iran, how hijab is not a compulsory religious practice and that women in constitutionally Islamic countries are protesting against it. The more important aspect is that the same girls who were not wearing a hijab till the end of 2021 suddenly started insisting that they will enter the classroom only with a hijab. How did it suddenly become about their religion and dignity? Are radical outfits like the PFI deliberately pushing women in India under the hijab? That's certainly what the government believes. We will take that to our guests in just a bit. Here are though some of the Solicitor General's most important submissions made in court today. That the student petitioners were influenced by Popular Front of India. That the PFI in fact started a movement late 2021 and 2022 on social media to push wearing of the hijab. And students were part of this larger conspiracy that they also acted as advised by the PFI in this case. More importantly, the CFI, which is the campus front of India. That no student was wearing the hijab till 2021. This is also something the local officials have pointed out and shown proof of via pictures of assemblies and classrooms over the years. Taking from arguments and verdict given by the High Court earlier, SG also reiterated that hijab is not an essential practice. This, of course, is contradicted by some other petitioners. The SG also mentioned, as I said, how women are rebelling against the hijab in Iran, which shows it is not essential for religion. In fact, in its March 2022 verdict in this case, even Karnataka High Court had talked about how the protest was engineered. Here is what the High Court had said in its written order, by the way. These were not observations. That the issue came up all of a sudden in the middle of an academic term and that the issue was blown out of proportion by the powers that be. It went on to say, some unseen hands are at work to engineer social unrest. We expect a speedy and effective investigation into this. In fact, the court went on to say the culprits must be brought to book, brooking no delay. Let me further break down how the CFI role had come to light then. And much of it has been accepted by them and even the families of the girls' students. This is also as per the Karnataka government intel report. So in, on October 28, 2021, there were rumours in Urupi where this began of a girl having been raped. Those rumours spread and the next day, ABVP protests were held against the alleged rape and these Muslim girls also took part in those protests. There are actually videos of that. Large crowds were mobilised, buses were also mobilised. Now, in the next few days, what happens is that the STPI leaders approach the families of the Muslim girls. They ask them to join the campus front of India. Maybe they were jittery because the girls took part in an ABVP uh, uh, protest. On November 7, 2021, the eight Muslim girls in question joined the campus front of India. There is even a picture of them holding uh, a placard or a banner of the campus front of India. And remember, the petitioners come from this set of girls. By November 2nd week, the girls started insisting on wearing a hijab to college and inside the classroom. They were actually allowed inside the campus, but not inside classrooms with the uh, headgear. The CFI vocally backed the protest on ground. And in December, the CDC, which is the committee of the college, these PU colleges in Urupi, decided that the dress code was to be followed and no exemptions were to be made. The girls were eventually barred from taking classes. That is when that story broke nationally. Now, if all of this was not enough, politics and even international affairs have entered this debate. Today, BJP criticised Rahul Gandhi, the former Congress chief, marching with a young girl child wearing the hijab and also covered in the full body black garment. The Congress's Bharat Jodo Yatra has already been in trouble over the use of children and today they faced allegations of glorifying the hijab, that too, on a young child. Then does it remain a matter of choice? 
Compare that to women in Iran breaking shackles and taking on a theocratic Iranian regime despite threats to their life, by taking off their hijabs, even burning them, chopping their hair off on social media as a mark of protest. All of this after the killing of a young girl who died allegedly after being taken into custody by the morality police and being beaten to death. So the big debate that's coming up today, the women in Iran, this has happened in other Islamic countries in the past, fight against patriarchal symbols like hijab. But is the PFI, bodies like the PFI and others pushing the hijab use in India when there is no need? First up, a little bit more. Vijay Prasad is joining us. He's from the Karnataka BJP unit. Dr. Pavan Rao Ambedkar is from the AIMIM. Arnav A. Bagalwadi is one of the advocates who had earlier represented one of the hijab petitioners. Advocate Afsar Jahan is a senior lawyer and women activist. Kapil Sankla is a senior Supreme Court lawyer. Amina Begum Ansari is a policy analyst also joining us. The PFI was invited on this show, but they refused to come. Let me go across to Dr. Pavan Rao Ambedkar on the role of the CFI and the PFI. Don't you think, regardless of politics, regardless of where any one of us may stand as far as political lines are concerned, it is a matter of concern that CFI was caught goading these young girls, using them for what was eventually their political agenda as far as the hijab Rao is concerned. Uh, very good evening to all of you. Hmm. Uh, first of all, I just want to tell you that Mr. Uh, Tushar Mehta, Solicitor General of India, has no any uh, face or something. That's why he is connecting the hijab issue with the PFI to change the main topic. Neither he is talking on the religious institutions based on the practices, custom, or uses, mm -hmm. or neither he is talking about the legal concept. I just want to tell you the one statement given by the uh, Justice Mr. Gupta in Supreme Court that uh, connecting to the Pagdi. Hmm. On the question of the Pagdi, Hijab, and uh, uh, Chunni, he has told that Pagdi was not equivalent to Hijab hmm. and the two could not be compared. Hmm. I just want to tell you and I just want to ask to the Tushar Mehta and uh, Justice Gupta that if I that if the pagri is not a religious symbol hmm. then connect to the hijab as a as a unreligious just like in a march 2022 no i don't think anybody is denying Karnat that hijab listen, is a religious listen, symbol listen, but listen, is it an essential the, religious li practice li listen the real point li listen the real point the full bench of the karnataka high court told that wearing of hijab by women Hmm. is not an essential practice yes if it is not an essential practice just look at this in the form of a legal practice if any girl or woman okay wants dr pavan rao you are not in court we are not discussing the, the legal arguments here and by the way let me just point why? out the basis why, why, why Tushar, not... one second sir one second the basis mr uh, Tushar mehta made the pfi link as i just now elaborated in my opening is because this has been mentioned before no, the no, karnataka no. high court this has been part of the Karnataka High Court order and there is a government intel report on this. So this is not coming out of thin air. Then secondly, what? secondly, yes. one second. It's been eight days of the hijab hearing in the Supreme Court. For majority of those days, till this afternoon, it was the petitioners who were arguing. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta has just started arguing. His arguments are not concluded. So don't make any you know, uh, final yes. comments on his arguments just yet. The question I asked you was different. What about the role of the CFI? What about the fact that these girls Why? were not wearing hijab till late 2021 and then suddenly started insisting on it, even drawing a binary that they will not attend classes if not in hijab? Is that not a dangerous ma precedent? Ma'am, I'm totally condemned. 
What? The connection of PFI and hijab issue. Why Mr. Tushar Mehta is not raising the legal and conceptual issue? He get to that, that sir. Like I said, he's only India. started making his he's arguments today. To me- I can't predict what he does. Divert- but once the hearings he's have concluded, divert- we can talk about what each side said. I'm not even going on what the petitioners have said no, in court. No. Please stick to the let's, subject I'm discussing and what I'm asking you. Listen Why do you condemn the link asking. when there is a link? The girls did join the there CFI. Is no link. There is no link. There, there is, is a no link. link. Why are you connecting the hijab issue the with the PFI? The campus front of India Why? has been very vocal and visible. And they have come out in the open in debates I have held that they have supported these girls legally and otherwise. And what about... Then why are you not talking about those persons who are raising the slogans in front of that girl, Jai Shri Ram and, and some other... From where they are getting the... From where they are getting but the But that's power, not a defense for hijab. Energy. Why are you not talking about them? Sir, Why that's not, not a hi- defense for insisting on hijab power. inside classrooms. I'm but talking about to, this insistence that started in late to, 2021. Try. Is it not a dangerous precedent no. that young girls are being used for political gains? Yes, I believe Vijay Why Prasad of the Karnataka right. BJP wants to come in. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, Shivani, see, we have been seeing uh, this uh, AIMIM uh, spokespersons coming on TV every evening and advocating uh, a lot of things okay mm. they have every evening they come with the taliban mindset come to talk on okay. the taliban mindset the talk on right the legal from the beginning and legal we are, are telling we are telling it is the pfi conspiracy and they are part of the larger conspiracy manufactured by congress uh, and just before the assembly elections no students i am categorically saying no students was wearing hijab until 2021 inside the classrooms. In this okay. school? The there are other schools where hijab is allowed? No, no, no. no. If no, 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 see, no, if no uniform, no, no, if, uh, no. Uh, if no uniform is prescribed, mm-hmm. students must wear dress with heels, goes along with the idea of equality, unity of India and law and order. In 2022, this movement was started by PFI by sending social uh, media messages saying that come to this uh, class with the by style wearing hijab. This was not spontaneous act by the students. Okay, they were part of a larger conspiracy, and children were acting as advised by the PFI people. Okay, now at the same time, at the same time, if you see Iran, hmm. Iran, unfortunately, Mr. a Prasad, uh, Mr. female Prasad, uh, Mr. Prasad, was Prasad, killed you don't uh, have in the custody. Answer. You don't or, have the legal, no, 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 neither legal see, you have a dual the mindset. religious answer. You That's have why a, you are uh, connecting. Sir, you That's have why you are mindset, connecting sir. to different why, sides. No, no, you are That's why you are connecting why you to, to different sides. One second, one second. One second, can I just come okay. in? Can okay. I just come in? One second. No. Uh, At the same time, Dr. Uh, Pavan Rao, please don't speak over our other guests. When you were speaking, you were given a chance. But I'm not understanding. Why are you so uncomfortable with the mention of Iran? Why should we not uh, mention uh, it? Uh, Pawan Rao, see, uh, try, try to make uh, Pawan Rao have patience to listen to others. Yes. The Karnataka High Court bench has given a judgment of 129 pages, spanning 129 uh, uh, pages. Hmm. The court has eloquently answered key questions pertaining to the hijab rule and said that prescription of the school uniform is only a reasonable restriction that yes. students cannot object to. The High Court has held that Wearing hijab is not part of an essential religious practice under Islam. Wearing hijab is an optional practice in Islam Mm. and as a consequence is not an obligatory religious practice. Yes. The wearing of hijab is a right that falls under the freedom of expression which is subject to institutional discipline. I am stressing down the word institutional discipline and not under freedom of religion. In the constitution. Yes, I believe the petitioners at that time had gone to court arguing that this is a fundamental right and clearly those arguments didn't work because you have to then go go to the touchstone of essential religious practice. Now, incidentally, the petitioners in court are saying, no, 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 don't go into essential religious practice. Possibly realizing that it will not be established as an essential religious practice because we know from our basic human experience that not all Muslim women wear the hijab. In fact, insisting, as some petitioners have done in court, that it is obligatory on all uh, Muslim women, condemns the Muslim women who don't wear the hijab. We've got two more advocates joining us. Arnav A, I want to come to you because you were initially representing one of the hijab petitioners. Don't you believe 
that there was indeed quote unquote an unseen hand would you be willing to concede that today as the karnataka high court order also mentioned just for so thank you all for having me in the show hmm. um one thing is that uh, there is no involvement of the bi and that's uh, pretty sure of that uh fact, the um, as per whatever has been stated so far with regard to the 2021 uh, involvement of the pfi these hmm. girls have joined the puc college much earlier mm-hmm. and in fact in, at that time of joining their id cards itself they are wearing a uh, uh, so you know question of p5 involvement is is uh, another rouse of the um, uh, of the advocates in the um, in the supreme court specifically um, the sg mm-hmm. to dissect the to derail rather the uh, major issue which is a constitutional issue now the pfi's involvement or not has no uh, relevance with regard to deciding the constitutional uh, issue whether yeah it wouldn't be, eventually it wouldn't eventually but isn't it important to discuss the, uh, the sequence of events you are saying that their id cards have the girls wearing hijab i don't think any one of us are denying that these girls wore hijab outside so of the, the school or even in the school campus not, uh, but we have also seen pictures arnav of these same girls inside assemblies and in classrooms not wearing the hijab from t- 2010 and other years preceding 2021 but at 2010 those uh, children were not uh, part of the see this is a puc college particularly we were uh, uh, the petition where the petitioners were studying in mm-hmm. so in 2010 they were definitely not in puc i'm saying other and girls at that time when they had joined puc is when uh, is the uh, relevant time and but even when they joined the, the puc cards, some of the petitioners were in the second year they weren't wearing the hijab in their first year is that true or not yeah. they were they were wearing hijab that's I what i said i have not seen any of those pictures where are those pictures then identity cards all of them had them wearing identity the card doesn't prove that they were wearing it inside classroom sir no there is absolutely there is there is enough and more proof there are just because you know then the why is it that whether the that whether the karnataka high court or the uh, supreme court no petitioner has ever argued that no petitioner has ever shown proof the, we we have argued that and there was no requirement of showing proof and the state government themselves have conceded through the statement of objections where they have shown pictures of the uh, students wearing uh, the hijab so the question of that i don't see uh, where have they uh, shown these pictures i don't know what you're talking about the today the solicitor general has once again reiterated that none no, of these girls that's... were wearing the hijab before 2021 that's, that's that's the way to that's the way to derail the question right now is but that's the same thing the they said in front of karnataka high court or not the, it's a religious essential religious practice or a fundamental right i think uh, for which uh, that needs to be answered not that d- definitely not needs to be answered i have no problems with that that of course the supreme court will decide kapil sankla is also joining us kapil sankla i feel that the goal post in this hijab debate and the hearings also has been consistently shifting first it was about essential religious practice when it became evident that you know hijab was not going to win that argument because as i said not all muslim women wear the hijab it became about fundamental rights it became about uh, you know uh, choosing when it was about fundamental rights you know the institutions rights also in some cases are over and above an individual's choice when they found that this argument is also not standing it became about but who does the hijab hurt why not just allow it is it a matter of public order to the extent that you know petitioners are also going on to say why am i being asked to choose between my hijab and the education nobody is asking you to choose have both Hmm. You know so the whole goal post has been shifting. You look look at all the petitioners. There are some 23 petitions in court. You look at all the petitioners they're all making very different arguments to the extent some are going to court and saying it's obligatory on all muslim women. I know it is quite shocking as to what is happening and what is actually interesting is that they have absolutely no legal basis or constitutional basis. I just heard Dr. Ambedkar here hmm. talking about why it is an essential practice, why it should be permitted. The question is, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, B. R. Ambedkar, in his book, hmm. himself had raised questions on the wearing of hijab. He said even parda system and hijab are detrimental and against the right of equality and against the constitutional mandate that has been given. Hmm. So today, when they are arguing about Article 26 or Article 25 or Article 14, right to equality, etc., they have to understand that equality is also between man and woman. Hmm. and as far as you know they have already given up on the argument about essential religious yes, practice they because have. it is not an essential religious practice yeah in, interestingly yes in fact it actually comes back and it it is very interesting that it is the first time it is mentioned 
is in the hadith and in the hadith at a much later date. Hmm. It's not a part of the Quran at all. And where in Quran it actually talks about, it doesn't talk about a face scarf or anything like that. It talks about the parda between where the men and the women move in the house. No, but Kapil, I went through the arguments that, for example, Mr. Pasha has made in this, in this case. He's gone on to say that it's not just about the Quran. Right. What is said in the hadith and what is the prophet claims to have said or done is equally obligatory on Muslims. So there are still some petitioners who are arguing well, that, that, the, that the hijab is obligatory on all Muslim women. Well, what is really interesting is the meaning of hijab as given there is also different. Yeah. It does not mean a face scarf or a face cover or a head cover. It means so a at partition. at the end of the day, if you, see, there are two arguments. Either you talk about, it means a partition. Hmm. And there are two parts of it. Either you're talking about your fundamental rights. Yeah. Or you're talking about, and in that you're talking uh, about essential religious practices. Yeah, You've already I, given I, I up One second, argument. one second. The let couple finish. Sir, Sir, I'm coming to you. Let no, couple finish. The yeah. second, the... The second part is that you you talk about binding precedents and the third is their argument but the second part is binding religious, binding precedents of the Honorable Supreme Court. Two judgments directly against them, they have not met those arguments. One of them has already been mentioned in the court which is Ismail Faruqi versus Union of India where the Honorable Supreme Court clearly stated as far as Article 25 and 26 is concerned that religious practice which forms part of integral essential practice of religion can only be seen only essential practices and not otherwise. The other is as far as the right of the institute itself is yes, there. Yes, exactly. Institution itself, itself is there. Which is Fat Fatima Tasneem versus State of Kerala, in which it was held that collective right of an institution would be given primacy over the individual rights of a petitioner, rightly so. I might belong to a school where there is very, very rich people and very poor people. The uniform, as also stated by Justice Gupta, is a great leveler. Hmm. It does not distinguish with, between whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're saffron, whether you're green, blue or whatever. It just says you are a member of that institute. You are a student and that hmm. is what your vajud, that is who you are. And that is what is important. Yeah. And therefore, I think what Mr. Tushar said, Mehta said was absolutely right. That a uniform is uniform for everyone. Yeah. You it know, this, even, this case has just so this, many this strands. There are, of course, legal constitutional arguments, but there are, of course, very social arguments to be made here as well. Let me go across to advocate Afsar Jahan. Yes. Uh, Ms. Jahan, the problem is that even within the Muslim world, there is no consensus whether hijab is essential or not. In that, in that respect, do you believe that this fight was always a needless fight to begin with? That this binary should have never been created and this binary was created because Western interests were involved here. Shivani, let me answer you. First of all, uh, as, a, as this debate started with P, uh, the students being associated with PFI, hmm. uh, let me clear that first of all, it's absolutely nonsense and frivolous to associate these students with PFI and the uh, case of hijab is not uh, the uh, case of PFI. It's hmm. the matter of uh, fundamental rights of Muslim women, okay, uh, which has been given under Article 29 as well as Article 25. Hmm. Let us be very clear, first of all, that Article 29, which protects our interests of minorities, you know, their culture, their language, their script, and then coming to Article 25, much talked about secularism or the right to religion or freedom of religion, hmm. uh, which is not... Uh, supposed to be taken away unless and until it's against public order, morality and health. Yes. These are the basic things which we are supposed to look into. Hmm. And uh, uh, if we are talking about essentiality of a religion, let me uh, quote uh, uh, very uh, quickly the constitutional bench judgment in Sardar Sayyidina Tahir Sayyafuddin versus State of Bombay. Uh, let me remind and recollect everything that with this uh, this judgment, which struck down Bombay Prevention of Excommunication Act 1949 hmm. on the ground of violating Article 25 and 26. In this case, Justice Iyengar held that essential part of religion includes practices which are regarded by the community as a part of its religion. But ma'am, that's now, the question I asked you. Now, Whether you it is essential or not, is, there is no please, consensus let me, let me on it. Finish. No, let no, but madam, that's me, that's what I'm asking you. Is let hijab essential or not? No, okay, I, will answer, I will answer about the consensus you are asking about. Okay, mm. But let me finish this, please. So uh, when we are talking about essentiality, what mm. these judgments, uh, are, are we trying to uh, say that these were pronounced without applying judicial mind. No, right? 
end. Coming back to your question, uh, question that mm. uh, we, uh, the community itself doesn't have consensus on that. Mm. Let me tell you, there are people in any community. Mm. Why are you talking only about Muslim community? Let me talk about any other community as such, be it Christians, be it Hindus, be it Muslims. Mm. There are people who are practicing Hindus practicing, uh, and some are non-practicing. Mm. There are some who are practicing Christians, some are non-practicing. Mm. But just because a sect do practice and a sect doesn't practice does that mean that ritual itself is not essential so are you saying that women who don't wear the hijab are not practicing muslims i am telling you okay. i am trying to say that there are people who hmm. who feel that this is okay this is uh, this is my right i hmm. want to stay i'm not say, uh, commenting on somebody that uh, they are not hindus or they are not muslims that's because they are not absolutely not following all the rituals I'm questioning the same to you, but will we say that these are not Hindus or these are not Muslims? But Hinduism is a Islam? very different religion, ma'am. Don't escape my question. Okay. Are you I saying that a, Muslim I'm, women I'm who don't wear the question. hijab are not Shivan, practicing Shivan, Muslims? Shivan, Shivan, if you don't say Shivan, that, Shivan, then, Shivan, then there Shivan, is no consensus on the hijab Shivan, being an essential practice. Shivan, Funny, let me tell you, hmm. practicing hmm. all the rituals is hmm. up to, is one's own choice. Exactly. Right? But we are not supposed to comment on anybody. But then there is no consensus. The only That's conclusion I can fine, draw from that mean, is that within the Muslim it's, world... It's, it's a matter of choice. Exactly. Shivani. Then it's but, a matter but, of but choice. Then it is yes. not an it essential mean, practice. But, 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 but it doesn't mean that we raise a question that we struck down the essentiality of the ritual itself. Or cult, uh, custom itself. No. Nobody is striking it down. The, Let me also reiterate there is no ban on the hijab. No, no. This is a simple and question of whether you can and, force and, yourself and to wear the hijab inside a classroom. Amana is listening to your argument. Amana, my fundamental question is this only. By insisting that these girls must be allowed to wear the hijab inside a classroom, is a dangerous precedent being set? that those women who don't wear the hijab are not good Muslims or not practicing Muslims. I see it going down that very slippery slope. Look at what's happening in Iran today. Why don't you we trying, le not you learn you from what is happening to, today, uh, there? To Ma'am, one second, you had your chance. Let Amana come in. Let Amana come in. Absolutely wrong. I was trying to only give you an example. Don't... Amana? Let me make my point. Please give me two minutes uninterrupted because I want to highlight certain points here. First of all, uh, this dictator. Hello. Yes, Amana, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. This dictatorship, which is, which is uh, see that Islamic state imposes on the women uh, by the law, hmm. is there in a Muslim society? We get not shame if we don't wear the hijab and the burqa. That is the reality of our society. Hmm. Let them make any point the hijab and the burqa is a dress practice which wants to women to control a women. It is a patriarchal dress code and it is a cultural dress code. It is not the Islamic dress code. Even Islam themselves has agreed upon this. Hmm. Now let me bring some sense in this burqa debate. Uh, you know, there is a no ban in India when it comes to wearing the burqa, niqab or hijab. Also, there is a no law which makes it mandatory to wear, mm. unlike uh, Iraq. Also, there are uh, at least 10 European European nations that has a put a ban on a burqa, mm. including there are some Muslim countries like uh, Tunisia, or, um, Azerbaijan, Lebanon. They have also banned the burqa in a varying degree. Because they also see it as a, you know, patriarchal, as a regressive practice. Mm. In a similar fashion, there was a burqa banned by a Muslim education society in Kerala, which on around 100 educational institutes in 2019. Yes. But we saw no outrage, no protest, no politics over it. Never happened. And also, this is a fact that in the contrast, we know, in the contrast, we know what happened in Afghanistan and uh, in uh, Iran, if women deny to, uh, if women choose not to wear the burqa. So, the point is, the, what is the real agenda behind this, all the protests? Why this is happening when there is a no ban in India over the burqa? You mentioned the, the case in Kerala. Behind... Here, there is a BJP government. Right. And that's where the PFI-CFI right. role comes. Mind you, I will reiterate, there is a picture of these girls joining the CFI, which is the campus front of India, an affiliation of the PFI. Uh, but that is where the right. question even, comes even of vested interests, Amana. Even even the father of that girl, Muslim, who shouted Allah was but is a PSI member. We can't deny this way. Now let me uh, talk about the you know uh, how psychologically it plays. 
the idea behind this uh, entire manufactured outrage is to create a narrative that state has a put a ban on a burqa or hijab hmm. and muslim identity is under the attack in so india they can fear a pro yes so they can fear a pro hijab or to, to be told the pro burqa sentiment among the masses with the help of communist ideology the politicization of this matter helps them to affect an ordinary muslim mindset Hmm. even that even uh, the uh, an average you know muslim she would have an aggressive practices but he will and she will support it because now she feels or he feels that his identity is under that attack yeah. And you know what i am most worried about amana you make a good point but what i am more uh, uh, worried about is the fact that we are treading down a very dangerous path where some are now insisting that it is obligatory on all muslim women and there is this border line talk of if you don't wear it then you don't believe in all practices others believe in all practices and that's really a very very dangerous precedent and binary to go down because then you're creating pressure on other muslim women in a country like india to don the hijab when they have decided that this is not what they want to do because there is a morality Shibani, code and uh, there is Shibani a dignity being thrusted down women's throats here Shibani, i want to talk Shivani, I yes. wanted to say something here, uh, Mr. Prasad. I have only 30 seconds left. Yeah. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. No, no. See, what is happening is, uh, let me not go to the integrity. It becomes too technical. Hmm. What is happening here is, uh, before 2022, uh, students were not wearing hijab. Hmm. PFI comes into the picture. They provoke the students to uh, wear hijab. And then, uh, when the school stops these uh, students uh, in entering the classes, sir. Classes, they starts uh, uh, start all these uh, protests, and then Karnataka government uh, comes in. They give the order. Hmm. They uh, the, the same P P O F I goes against the uh, government order, and they go to go to the court. Fifteen days is spent in court. They don't uh, believe in the court's uh, judgment, and yeah. then they uh, entirely uh, lock, stock, and barrel. They go to the Supreme Court. Well, forty petitions. Come that's in. their right. What about the? But you are uh, also right in the court. fact that the CFI and the PFI are on record to say that they will not accept the Karnataka High Court judgment. Yeah, see, If they had nothing to do with this case, why were they giving out those statements and press conferences? Yeah, yeah. But I've run out of time. I've run out yeah. of time, sir. Let's see how the hijab hearing continues in the Supreme Court. One side of petitioners have spoken; the other side is yet to speak. Moving on, but staying.